your approval rating is lower than Nigel Farage's right now. I'm English. Did you know that about me? I come from England. Churchill, Shakespeare, Maggie Thatcher, the Beatles. Well, is it under the auspices of woke liberalism and Keir Starmer that the UK is going to go from being one of the furnaces and crucibles of democracy to just the latest colony on the prison planet? Keir Starmer, Starmageddon, two-tier Keir, appears to be trying to augment exactly that. But the people are turning against him just months after this WEF stooge erupted into power or apparently after a free and fair election, and I'm sure it was, other than the way that it's systematically designed to ensure that only a certain number of people can ever be elected into positions of power, and if anyone radical does ever truly rise up, they work pretty hard to make sure those people lose their ability to open their bank accounts or communicate openly, and they're demonised and oh, ruined. I mean, like, that country is going to the dogs. All of the institutions that we were once proud of, the NHS carved up and sold, the BBC, state propaganda now, all of it requires a radical reckoning. Let me know in the comments in the chat if you agree with that. Keir Starmer now is claiming that democracies don't work in accordance with the will of the people, which is literally how democracies are supposed to work, but they work instead on the basis of what he wants. What he's, of course, referring to is this petition that's changing the world. This has been seen, obviously, by 39 million people. It's Elon Musk talking about this new uh, petition where people are demanding a general election. Uh, his popularity has dropped to an incredibly uh, low 26 points he's only just gotten into power and he is absolutely loathed here is Keir Starmer democracy harmer being confronted with the fact of his own unpopularity are you now feeling the pressure because I think there's a petition yeah, that's exactly. currently Your approval online ratings have dropped. 1.9 yeah. people who want it yeah. want the election it's to go again it's now is over it two, two yeah, million it's, now? it's now over just over two I, million do you feel the pressure Look, I remind myself that very many people didn't vote Labour at the last election. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... I'm not, I'm not surprised that many of them um, want a rerun. That isn't how our system yeah. works. Uh, there would be plenty of people who didn't want us in in the first place. Um, so, look, what I focus is on is the decisions that I have to make every day. If but, I, but surely, and it's a bit but like sure, opposition. But you, you, want you, to be, you, want, you want us, the public, to, to, to trust you, to like you, to think he's the man for the job, he's doing what he needs to do. Your approval rating is lower than Nigel Farage's right now. You're not surprised, but you should be terrified, alarmed, and in absolute dread. Just so you know that when he was the head of the CPS, Keir Starmer, after there were riots in our country, opened 24-hour courts and ensured that crown courts were used instead of magistrate courts so the people that rioted, it was, you know, a pretty dodgy time of social disturbance, but what he showed in his handling of it was authoritarianism. He was head of the CPS and head of the opposition, you know, this is prior to he was in government, over a series of years, while Julian Assange was first in the Ecuadorian embassy in the UK and then in Belmarsh prison without trial. Now, surely, if you were the leader of the opposition and you were the former head of the CPS, you would see what was happening to Julian Assange, who revealed to us the extent of war crimes in Iraq, corruption in the Democrat Party, and how various nations collaborate when it comes to oppressing and censoring free speech voices. It's known as the Five Eyes Nations. It's one of the things that Rachel Maddow is concerned that Trump will break down. That's the Anglophonic countries, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, etc., all give one another each other's domestic data to bypass laws that prevent governments spying on their domestic population. Assange revealed all of this to us, with some credit due to Chelsea Manning and to Edward Snowden. Those people were jailed or exiled. Now, you want to know what side Keir Starmer is on? When asked whether he believed in Westminster, that's our parliament or our Congress or Davos, he, without hesitation, said Davos. You have to choose now between Davos or Westminster. Davos. This politician is an authoritarian masquerading as a liberal. This is the dangerous game that we're playing across the globe when we yield to the haircut politicians like Trudeau or that woman that was in charge of New, Ze New Zealand for a bit, which she called Jacinda or something. I don't know who's running stuff in Australia now, but I know in every nation in the world right now, they're saying, we need to protect you, so we have to censor you. We need to protect you, so we have to throw people in jail because of stuff they've said 
in the internet. You'll be aware that this is happening across my country, in part because of the excellent reporting of Winston Marshall out of Mumford and Sons. They've been clearing out the prisons mm. to put in people now for literally Facebook memes. There's one guy in prison for a Facebook meme for three months. There's one woman who's doing two and a half years for a tweet. And notably, Tommy Robinson, who's still in prison for contempt of court, but Elon Musk has started posting about that. But firstly, let's have a look at Keir Starmer and a story also from Legacy Media, so be careful on how much you trust it uh, when it comes to these calls for a new election because people are so dissatisfied. Under UK parliamentary rules, if 100,000 people sign a petition, that petition has to be debated on the floor of the co Commons. This is a petition that says you must call a general election and it's got 2.5 million signatures. I don't think we've ever seen a government start so poorly, have we? Never. I think uh, charging older people on the edge of winter uh, more for their heating was a sign of a Labor Party that's gone mad and lost its its uh, touch with reality. Now, th these uh, this petition will result in nothing. They've got a huge majority of over 400. doesn't force them to an election, but does get them a debate. Um, and it confronts us all, Peter, with the issue of is fix uh, terms of parliament in the UK, five years, in Victoria's case, four years, a good thing, or would it be better to go back to the old system mm. of more flexible terms? People are concerned that there are custodial sentences being dealt out for stuff that people said on the internet. People are concerned that legislation is being created that enables people to jail political opponents, create laws that are useful to the powerful. If what they cared about most of all was the welfare and well-being of ordinary people, surely they'd be interested to see that there is so much disdain and disgust rising up across the nation. And perhaps they'd be willing to have an honest, open conversation and whisper it referendum on what most people think about immigration. You know, I might not agree with people's views on migration into the UK or your country, but I do agree with the principle of free speech and I do agree with the principle of democracy. So I don't need to do any more thinking on those subjects. All I have to do is hand it over to those institutions and hope that those institutions are reliable. Rumble make these uh, snacks, you see. This is a brand called Positive. It's a pet food brand that Rumble uh, have. But also they have a pet insurance that is an affiliate to it. You know, like um, dogs can go from very high energy to being sick in an instant. And you know, it's like if you have to call a vet, like when they're out of hours. It's a terrible way to manage your dog's health. Not to mention it can be very stressful for you. So there's this emergency pet kit that you can get from Positive Health, which contains critical medications and supplies that can keep you out of it and maybe even save your dog's life. So if you want to use it, go to Positive, that's spelled like P-A-W, positive.com slash brand. That's positive, P-A-W-S, itive.com slash brand and get your pet emergency kit that's got critical meds in it like activated charcoal and styptic powder and you can get 15% off using the code brand today. Go to positive.com slash brand and use the code brand to get 15% off. I like these um, rumble connected organizations because they've been so supportive. Good boy. So supportive to our channel. It's great to uh, give a little bit back. There it is. I do know that Elon Musk has been posting a lot about Tommy Robinson's case. Tommy Robinson's a British uh, activist, journalist and nationalist who no question when it comes to the subject of Islam has some pretty I would say, entrenched views that become perhaps understandable if you watch him on Jordan Peterson with him and Tammy Peterson talking about the, his particular conditions of, of his biography, origin and upbringing. They're certainly not views that I myself endorse because I really truly believe in the possibility of working people to find ways of aligning and allying against real power and real corruption. But as I've said to you before, above all else, and perhaps not above all else, but certainly these are principles that I would be willing to die for. I believe in free speech and I believe in people's right to self-determination and governance. And when you say that, that means you're going to hear stuff you don't agree with and you're going to end up with 
systems that don't behave in accordance with your will. Now, what I suppose all of the censorship and free speech stuff is about is, oh no, if we let people have access to all information, they're going to start making decisions that we don't want them to make. That could be because they love us so much in these positions of institutionalized corruption and globalized government, or it could be because they've got an agenda and a trajectory, even if that's not something as nefarious as a new world order where they're trying to maximally introduce measures of system management through passport control, uh, digital ID, digital currencies, mandated medications and medicines, uh, 15 minute cities. Absolute control is what I believe to be the agenda. And whenever a piece of legislation is introduced that facilitates that, you should be really alert to the, the fact that control is likely the goal. Now, if control is the goal, they can't just tell you we want to control you. They have to legitimately find ways. Like, Surely you and I can agree that racism is wrong. Surely you and I can agree that everyone should be spoken to kindly and with love. And though we all fail and falter in those areas, those are the principles that we should be aspiring towards. Why? Because we're one all human family and that love is how we make ourselves like our creator and we should behave lovingly. Now, once you get God out of the way, people tend to pick and choose who it's okay to love and be kind to. Be lovely to these people because it's convenient to me personally or it suits and fits my agenda. What we've found ourselves living in in is a culture voided of real values. That's what these autocratic, technocratic leaders are all about. Voided of meaning, often compromised in a variety of ways. Let me know in the comments and chat if you're aware of the ways that certain political leaders are compromised. There's always stuff on them they don't want getting out there. Why do you think all this Epstein and Diddy stuff is so powerful? Because there's people out there that are, you think are like super together and with it or moralizing and vanilla and then Turns out that at party time, things go a little bit awry. And even if it's not involved in what appears to be institutionalized deception and corruption, just on the lower level of their personal lives, there's often stuff they'd rather you didn't know. It's a pretty interesting time to be alive. And it also means that a lot of our leaders are compromised and controlled. Let me know in the comments and chat on Rumble which politicians you believe to be compromised and controlled by means of this nature. That's the sort of stuff you can stay, say on Rumble. Good luck saying that anywhere else. Well, also X. And they don't want you saying stuff like that. Now, me personally, I'm not too interested in people's consensual sex lives, people's consensual sex lives are their own business. Who can't consent? Animals, the mentally ill, children, the dead. These are people that cannot consent just for the avoidance of doubt. And it seems that some people are massively, massively compromised in ways that are startling and astonishing. And if that was to ever get out there, I think a lot of people would lose a lot of respect. Now, what seems to be happening as a result of that is people that we're voting into positions of political power, and I'm not, by the way, making any particular suggestions about any particular individual, are forced to govern in alignment and compliance with globalist ideals that are always presented as sort of bureaucratic. By that, I mean that they're managerial choices around safety and convenience. Oh, we can't have that information out there. Censor it. It's not safe. We have to take this medicine. It will make you all safe. We have to introduce these laws to make you safe. But in so doing, they're kind of setting up their institutions as godlike. There's no question that if you're going to have large societies of 30 million, 50 million, 300 million people, there's going to need to be some consensual government. There's going to need to be operations and logistics. But what I think we're moving towards is a time where people want to feel that that power is as close to them as possible that they're governing their own lives and they're governing their own communities. Indeed, isn't the culture war just the, the continual reiteration? There, there are some people that believe in stuff like gender fluidity. There are some people that believe in things like Christianity. There are some people that believe in things like Islam. And what are we to do with that? Spend forever in perpetual war quibbling about symbols and signs? Or are we going to accept now that the idea of centralized national authority has to start to be addressed? In fact, that's precisely precisely what this technology affords us. You could have in the same way as you have taxis centralized and coordinated by Uber and people's bedrooms and homes centralized by Airbnb. Of course, because the mindset underneath it is commercial and capitalist. These are both, I would say to some degree or another, exploitative systems, particularly Uber. I know a lot of Uber drivers that feel pretty exploited. Let me know in the comments and chat if you drive for Uber. This kind of technology could be used to aggregate information and govern communities. We're moving towards a time, blessedly, when it comes to American health, where people are saying, 
We should be growing food and rearing food locally and eating it where it's produced, wherever possible. Can you imagine the economic connotations of a system that was biased in that direction? It's not going to overnight change, is it? You're still going to have industrialised farming and abattoirs. You're still going to have fields of monocrops like a chessboard across Nebraska. But the the mentality, the mindset, the intention would be towards regenerative, organic, localised farming. These ideas make sense unless your sole motivation is the centralisation of resources, finance and authority. Well, hopefully with people like Callie Means now being listened to and Aaron Siri making big waves in the area of big pharma and potentially big agriculture, although it's outside of the HHS purview. And men like Bobby Kennedy now finally being in positions of leadership and men like Jim O'Neill rising through the ranks and Jay Bhattacharya and Marty Makari, people that are outspoken and bold when it comes to big pharma and opposing centralised authority and its potential for corruption, whether that's state, bureaucratic or corporate commercial. We have new opportunities and new chances and we mustn't lose those chances. We have to oppose the corruption that is becoming fully immersive and 360. But that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.